everyone. Welcome to At Home with Sally. I'm Sally Clarkson, and I have the biggest privilege in the world to be with so many friends from all over the world who join me every week to listen to my stories, inspiration, biblical encouragement, and I am just so glad that you're here today. Thanks so much for joining me. Hello, my friends. It's Sally Clarkson, oh, and welcome to Tea Time Tuesday. Um, as you know, I have been away from you for not too long, but I am just barely getting back on my feet, and I'll be explaining a little bit of that to you today. But I am so thankful for you. I get so many letters from people every week. I know so many of you are carrying burdens or feeling inadequate or feeling like you're alone, or just wondering how in the world do you handle these adult children, or teenagers, or toddlers, or are you going to live through sleepless nights? And so I just want you to know, all of you, marriage problems, prodigal problems, whatever, we're kind of living in a very interesting time, uh, a very demanding time, a very scary time. If you pay attention to any of the news, don't. But I, I just really pray for you and hope that God will bless you, open your eyes to the beauty that moves beyond the nihilistic issues of our world, the kingdom coming, the kisses and hugs that are available right now. Uh, I, just, I just think about you and pray for you that there will be someone encouraging in your life. And I hope all of you are well. I really kind of miss doing this. It's, it's good for me to think through all of the different things every week. Well, first of all, before I forget and tell you about the drama of my life, and it has been, <laughs> it's been um, circumstantially dramatic. You know, I, I'm alive. We have a safe home. I get to sleep in my bed every night now, which is absolutely wonderful for me. But um, before I mention any of that, when I got home from Oxford, uh, there you have to realize that we have a wonderful group of staff people who work for us. And uh, someone collects, when, when Clay and I are both overseas doing our mission uh, in Oxford, and uh, when uh, you know, we get in mail, we, we, we often get uh, things that people have sent to us. And so I had this pile of mail to go through, and sometimes accidentally, when someone sends something to me, either I, um, the address has been cut off, or maybe a letter has been placed with something else. But I'm telling you, I received the sweetest. It was a beautiful blue and white dress with teapots all over it, bright blue and white, and someone wrote to me and said, I make dresses and I had some extra material. And if your grandchild can't wear this, send it to someone else. But I'm telling you, it was the most, it is the most beautiful dress. It actually fits Lillian. And the reason I'm telling all of you all this is because somehow the name and the letter was mixed up with the pile of other mail that we had gotten in the past um, four months. And I don't have the name or address of the person who made it. So if you're out there, everybody in the world just heard about your kindness. <laughs> and I want you to know that Lillian will not take it off. She wears it every single day. And I can't even believe somebody is as talented as you to make this beautiful little dress. And um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me know who you are. That would just be so wonderful. Um, uh, if there's anything, any way that I have neglected you because of the craziness of the last few months, please let me know or let my staff know. Um, it has just been kind of an interesting time. So anyway, um, I, I wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about my week. I, I am sorry I haven't been here, but after I got home from overseas, and I don't even know in the saga of my life, this is like a continuing chapter-by-chapter chapter book story. Um, but anyway, after Clay and I um, had, we went to Heathrow Airport, which is in London, out, just outside of London. It's where we fly. 
and our plane was canceled. And so we were there for 36 hours before we even got on our plane to come back home. And so we lost a whole day and a half. Um, I think I might have even told you something about this. We came back to a broken dryer and a broken washer with 16 loads of laundry that needed to be washed from these wonderful actors that stayed at our house. And, um, and our, our uh, cupboards were empty. And so we made a $400 order just to get basic stuff and some meals for the three weeks that Sarah and her family were going to stay here. And um, so we got the stuff clean. We made all the beds. We um, were preparing. Prepare, prepare, prepare. That's what my whole lesson is about today. Um, Then Monday, two days after we got here, she and um, her children and... um, Thomas got here, and eventually four more people came, our children and two guests who were with them. So for a while here, we went from um, uh, being overseas, jet lag, uh, interesting preparation, running as fast as we could, to having 11 guests in our home, and they all wanted to eat on a regular basis. (laughs) And we really have had a lot of fun. Um, But anyway, they, uh, they had gathered here, to celebrate my 70th birthday early. It's still in a couple of weeks. I'm so sorry, but those of you who are on social media are going to hear about it again. (laughs) I'm so encouraged by your well wishes. I don't want you to feel like you have to wish me well again, but I will have to say something on my 70th birthday. And so they were here to celebrate, and um, we really had so much fun. Um, we, We just spent a day And I'll tell you a little bit more about that um, on my birthday, probably. Um, But anyway, uh, it it has been a crazy week. And um, as a matter of fact, what was interesting, and maybe I've already told you this, but seven of us who came in to the airport here in Denver, seven of our planes were canceled. And so it was interesting just trying to figure out when people were coming to the airport and so on. Well, the next thing that happened is that um, I have been to urgent care five times with the people who were staying in our home. (laughs) And so, uh, you know, one was um, a a burst eardrum and then uh, a second appointment for that because it's never been healed or gone away. Um, Pneumonia for one of the people who were here. Um, A blood clot for one of the people who were here. Anyway, it just kind of goes on and on and on. And so between, uh, I was the, I was the uh, person who volunteered to stay in the room with the precious one who had pneumonia and almost 104 degrees temperature because for about three nights there was no sleep. And um, so between uh, taking care of this child and Um, feeding my family, and um, celebrating life together, uh, we had quite an interesting time. So I want to tell you a little bit um, about just kind of some more parts of our week. Many of you know that our family, if you've read my books or any of my books, um, there there are certain things that Clarkson's love to do. We love tea. We love to talk. We like words. We like books. We like climbing in the mountains. We, we go up for family day. We go up for any time we can. Um, we live near Pikes Peak, and so we drive up the windy road, and we go to Mueller State Park, which is a wonderful place that we've gone to for many years. And so we piled into two cars, and we drove up to Mueller State Park. It's a wonderful place to visit if you are ever um, in Colorado. And as we drove up, Joel was driving one car, and Sarah and Thomas were driving in another car. And first, Sarah went through, and the man who ran the National Park office said, Are you Sarah Clarkson? I follow you on Instagram. And he went on to talk with her and said, I'm a believer, and blah, 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 blah. And then um, after her, Joel came through driving, and he said, Oh, you're Joel Clarkson. I know you. I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> and he knew all about um, Joel's music, which was kind of fun. This happens to us on occasion. Uh, I love running into all of you all in different parts of the world. 
And um, so what I was going to tell you about is that this has gone on for years and years and years. When we drive up to the mountains, we stop. It just happens that the favorite um, coffee place that we are able to go to in this very small town is a Starbucks. And um, one of my new favorite drinks, because a friend introduced me to it, um, and it's, it's really not that big of a deal drink, but I was surprised that I liked it. Um, and so I um, regularly, when I go out, order a decaf cappuccino made with oat milk because um, I kind of, you know, space out my caffeine during the day. And anyway, I have really liked that more than I thought with two raw sugars. I'm so sorry for those of you who have cut sugar out of your life. I have not. And it, it's really one of my favorite new drinks. So we stopped up at our little half point Starbucks in Woodland Park. And then whenever you get at the very beginning of these mountainy forested areas that we're all familiar with, and it's just our hearts start beating faster. We love it so much. And we have a, a certain place that we go to in Mueller State Park, a, a place that we have taken pictures for thousands of uh, times, actually not thousands, but at least 20 times. And we usually take a picnic of fried chicken and all this other stuff. But we went up with the with the kids, and we had some um, some interesting little treats and snacks, and we walked all over. We hiked. We love to hike. But on the way up, and this is my musical reference for the week, um, there is a person named Rich Mullins, and probably most of you all know Rich Mullins. But if you don't know him, I want to tell you a little bit about him. Um, because he was this this man, this, this singer songwriter at the kind of the beginning of the growth of of uh, contemporary Christian music. I think um, you know he was really really popular in the '90s um, and even before that. He was a friend of Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant and all these people. But he was absolutely beloved. But he was this rare kind of out of the box individual who lived with abandon for God. Um, he used his music to, it was almost poetry, it was to worship God, to point to God. Um, he was the one who wrote, um, um, uh, You're an Awesome God, Awesome God, and um, Step by Step, which is a beautiful song. And uh, another song I love is, um, We are not as strong as we think we are. But anyway, um, if you listen to Spotify, or if you listen to Apple Music, uh, the most uh, popular uh, playlist I would, I would recommend is his album called Songs. But um, my boys, especially all of us, actually, we almost have memorized all of his songs because we would listen to them Turn up, turn it up loud. Sing every single song because we had memorized it because we had listened to it for so many times. And um, he was a man who was so filled with the powerful spirit of God in his life and his compassion for people and his love for sharing with people. He was kind of a David. I mean, he did not have um, a sinless life. Obviously, none of us do, but. There were some issues that he dealt with that um, are normal issues for men to deal with um, in, in our contemporary culture. But he was like David. He sought God with his whole heart, and his music is transformative. And he actually became a sort of a, a model to my boys. And um, they just loved Rich Mullen's songs. So listen to songs. That is my um, musical recommendation for the week. And we are so nostalgic about it. Uh, we listen to it every time we go in the mountains. And then, um, there, you know, there's another song series that I might recommend for next week. But uh, find out more about Rich Mullins. See, it, he has a, um, a new version of his biography uh, called An Arrow Pointing to Heaven. And this is not a book for young children. It is a book for young men and men beyond. But his whole life was passionately devoted to um, serving God. And then as it happens, and I can remember when this happened, 
he um, was killed in a car accident um, a number of years ago, 25 years ago. And, um, but he was a, a kind of a David sort of figure who called people, anybody who met him wanted to have the passion that he had. So his name is Rich Mullins. Um, and that was really fun. Um, another thing I wanted to tell you, one of the things we do eat a lot is the Clarksons, as you know. And so another thing I wanted to tell you about was yesterday when we had our Sunday afternoon tea time for all you tea time discipleship lovers. You have written me so many letters. I'm so glad you like the book. And I will tell you what really pleases my heart is that a couple of hundred groups, as far as we can tell, have started since I put the book out to tea time discipleship, women discipling women, women gathering together, women mentoring women. Uh, and it's hard to tell exactly how many, but I've gotten multiple, multiple letters, and we have a Facebook group called Mom Heart on Facebook, Mom Heart Groups. And um, that pleases me so much to think about women gathering to strengthen, to encourage, to disciple one another. So um, though it's a beautiful book, we have lots of recipes. I, people are always asking me, what's my favorite teas? Do you know more about tea? It's all in Tea Time Discipleship. But anyway... Um, so you know that we, as a family, for many years, since the kids were very little, have a Sunday afternoon tea time. Well, this week we had this really wonderful peach cobbler. It's, uh, it's called, uh, go to the, um, to the website called tastesbetterfromscratch.com. Tastesbetterfromscratch.com. T-A-T-E-S-B-E-T-T-E-R-F-R-O-M scratch.com. And it's peach cobbler. And what you do is you, yes, on Sundays we use sugar and butter. Anyway, you you put the butter in the bottom of the pan. And then you you put this incredible mixture that rises up through the peaches to kind of make a wonderful peach cobbler. And then we had enormous peaches that we had gotten at our store. Um, And anyway, we had the most wonderful peach cobbler yesterday from this site, so I wanted to tell you about it. Tastes better from scratch. But peach cobbler is such a wonderful food in the summer months. And um, so we had that wonderful peach cobbler. And then I wanted to tell you, I have literally probably about 2,000 books. That's a, net, that's a guesstimate. We have no idea how many books we have up in my little study. Um, but what I wanted to um, tell you about before I go into preparation is um, one of my very favorite illustrators is Eloise Wilkin, E-L-O-I-S-E, capital, well, W-I-L-K-I-N. And she has, she did uh, so many different books in the 50s and beyond, but all of her children are are sweet, they're, they're darling, they're cuddly, and um, my grandchildren have loved my Eloise Wilkin illustrated books that I collected for them over the past number of years. I collected it for my children and read it to them. And one of the books we've been reading there is called The Visit. And um, it's just such a lovely, it's about a little, they love it because it's about a little girl visiting her, um, her relative and staying with her and what she does on the visit. So that's been really, really delightful. I thought I would tell you about that. But um, I wanted to read um, a couple of verses to you, and um, it kind of applies because, uh, first of all, preparation is what I wanted to talk to you about. Preparation is the action or process of making something ready for use or service or of getting ready for some occasion, test, or duty. So it's the process of getting ready, being ready ahead of time. And a lot of people have said, I don't know how you do what you do. And honestly, I would say that the habit of preparing way ahead of time or preparing as quickly as possible if you have two days before everybody's coming to visit you. (laughs) But um, preparation is a key for life. It's a key for making your home ready for when you have visitors. It's being ready for holidays by preparing way ahead of time. It's having a plan for what you're going to do, how you're going to accomplish it, preparing for home education, preparing for traditions, preparing for 
whatever it is, to prepare ahead of time is so essentially important in your life. Um, Prepare for heaven. Have a quiet time every day. Worship God. Thank Him for His presence in your life. Ask Him to lead you through the power of the Holy Spirit uh, today in what you're doing. Lord, I am feeling impatient. Please, um, please fill me with your spirit and show me how to be gracious and show me how to be gentle. Preparation means that you are in the process of becoming ready. A practicing piano is a preparation for, uh, for a concert. Um, so I, I wanted to talk about preparation today because preparation for my children and grandchildren coming Um, was absolutely essential, and I've learned to prepare for a long time. But I wanted to read you a couple of scriptures that have really encouraged me. It's all in Luke 14, verses 28 to 31. But it says in, in verse 28, For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? And then it goes on to say, if, if he doesn't plan and prepare, people will laugh at him for the unfinished building that he made. So preparation is about realistically counting the cost of your ideals, putting into place practical goals according to your family, your story, your uh, vulnerability, your strengths. And then in Luke fourteen thirty one, it says, or, so first it says, Who would build a tower without calculating the cost to see if you can finish it so that people won't make fun of you? But in Luke 14, 31, it says, Or what king going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And so I knew um, preparing is, you know, uh, I love it in Proverbs where it says, look at the ant, how the ant, uh, you know, works hard, prepares a life and and has a very organized life. That's why I like those little ant, um, I I don't know what they're called, are they called ant cages or whatever, where you can put ants inside and your children can see how they work, how they build their little places. But... um, Basically, preparation is a really godly um, virtue because it, it, it's, the, it's the girls in the parable about um, putting oil in their lamps so that when the bridegroom came back, they were able to go immediately into the banquet because they had prepared their lamps. And so um, before, I just wanted to talk a little tiny bit about this because Preparation, whether it is uh, for a test, for a job, for a company, whatever. Preparation is a commitment and a work that each of us needs to value and to put into our lives. It's, you can't just build a life on ideals. Ideals have to have feet. Ideals have to have a plan. And so part of my preparation for um, my children coming to see me was that Clay and I thought through together, he is a great partner in this. How can we most easily make this a child-friendly house? Five, three, and two. She just turned two. It was one for a long time. How can we prepare our house so that for three weeks of them staying here, um, it will be as good as it can possibly be? So we took my little study. I have a I have a, um, a smallish um, room on our main floor. Um, we have a, a house that you know has a couple of floors. And on the main floor, we have our, our dining room, our living room, a den. And um, then I have a little study. It's my own little office. Clay's office is downstairs in the basement. But I have literally a couple of thousand books there. Um, I so and it, it has a door that closes off to the main part of the house, a little glass door. And so I brought up, we had in our storage, we have saved all of our um, duplos, all of our Legos. Each of them has a lidded box to be in. 
We have Robinsberger, which is my favorite German puzzles that we got when we lived in Austria. But um, these beautiful young children, Robinsberger puzzles that we've saved ever since my kids are little. And each puzzle has a Ziploc bag so that we don't mix up all the pieces. They can do one puzzle at a time and put it back in. They are, they've really learned how to cooperate with this. Um, we had uh, bubbles and sticker books and, um, and science and nature books and craft books. And, uh, and did I say bubbles? I think I did. And uh, sidewalk chalk and um, new markers and new sticker books. And um, my, my grandchildren, as with my children when they were little, in the middle of the day, they have a quiet hour. And they actually love their quiet hour because they've practiced it. And so during that quiet hour, um, they might listen to some music or um, a, a, an audio book. Um, they can color. They can build their little things. We have all sorts of things to put together. We had blocks we have these little geometric, colorful little tiles that you can fit together in a geometric um, shapes. Um, Lillian built a, a lake with a garden, with um, forest, and out of these little shapes. Um, but anyway, uh, we got a little uh, kiddie pool downstairs. And uh, with the kiddie pool, Clay got these little, he ordered from Amazon, I believe, or from online somewhere, um, three little fishing poles that have a little magnet on the end of the string, and we would throw all these little fish in the kiddie pool, and they would fish for the fish. And then I went to a discount store, and I got um, one of those handheld um, bottle moisturizers, the squirters, you know, that have the little handle on it. And uh, then I got each of them a big plastic bowl. All of these things cost 50 cents, and then a big plastic cup. And they have spent hours and hours in this kiddie pool, splashing each other, squirting each other, going fishing, pouring bowls of water in, pouring cups of water out. Um, and so, but to make a long story short, we prepared for our grandchildren so that they would have things to do ahead of time. And then we put it into a schedule. In the morning, I make them all, and they, <laughs> believe it or not, they all like my little kid's tea that I make them. So, me, Queenie, will you make me some tea? Me too, me too, me too. And so we, they get up, and usually they go immediately into their playroom, my little room. And they do something. They build something. They play with something. They have a little game called Quips, which we have played with them over and over again. Um, they have all sorts of little games, two or three games that we had when my kids were little. But the point is, they come downstairs, they go to their room, they think it's a special room. We put music on in there, and they play and play and play in that room, different times all during the days. And of course, guess what, friends? Because we had to get a new washer and dryer, I asked the men if they would let me keep the boxes. And so the boxes became two houses. We pull it out of the garage, put it into the middle of our hallway, and they have put blankets and pillows and um, you know, and, and made little beds and taken the stuffed animals in there. They've been playing house in the boxes. And then we just pull everything out into the garage in the box. We don't empty it. And then they can pick it. But anyway, I thought it might help you to know what we did um, in our home to keep things going, to keep the kids entertained. And of course, one of the primary entertainment pieces is Darcy, our golden retriever. <laughs> the funny thing is, is two of the children out of three Adore Darcy, and absolutely, when they come into the room, Darcy runs away. <laughs> I think they've been accidentally putting their finger in her eyes, um, you know, pulling her hair and stuff. And then the third one is kind of afraid of her, so we have to keep Darcy away from the third one. But anyway, all that to say, um, whatever you are doing, uh, and I, I want to say, too, that... Um, when you have a big commitment coming up, whether it is um, a birthday, a wedding, a celebration, family visiting you, when the relatives came, another favorite book, um, limit your commitments outside. I knew I wasn't going to be able to feed everyone, um, take care of them, be engaged, give my children a break so they could sleep a little bit unless 
I limited my commitments. I had to cancel some of the work that I normally do. Make realistic expectations. Prepare as best as you can. And then plan on plans changing and people interrupting the plans you made. Decide to make peace and walk in the Spirit. God, give me a sense of your peace right now. I want to be gentle. I'm not feeling gentle, but I want to be flexible because my moments of my days are in your hands. You know, when there are children, and actually I will have to say when there are adults, someone always changes the plan that you had by either being sick, having an accident, the car dies, uh, whatever it is, the washer and dryer die. But if you know ahead of time, if you are mature and seasoned and you say, okay, I know to expect that all of my planning and preparation might be interrupted and I'm going to be flexible, then um, you will be able to enjoy and experience whatever happened in the way that you're supposed to. I have learned with my older kids, they are adults. They do things differently than I do. They do some things the same way that I do, but it is not my role to correct or to tell them how I did it better, or to tell them what they should be doing. I trust my kids and try to enter into their world to support them as much as possible. That's part of me preparing my mind for the encounters. But um, I think that uh, one thing, too, I will add to that is for all of you precious um, women um, who are out there, Know that within the context, the more sinful people you have in the house, uh, the more people you room with, if you're a single woman, the more whatever's, um, there is going to be friction. There are real human beings, and each human being has a personality. You, part of your preparation is to prepare yourself emotionally to say, I will be a conductor of peacemaking, a conductor of joy giving. Um, because when I kind of take hold of my home and say, how can I build an atmosphere of welcome, an atmosphere of um, serving, an atmosphere of loving? Um, And so I I want my kids to want to come home. And so I'm very grateful that they did come home. And I'm also very tired. (laughs) You know, it's just part of life. It's just part of being... Um, a conductor of beauty and goodness in your home. So I hope that that some of this might have encouraged you um, because it's been my week. It's been the reason that I'm not always at this point available to do the Tea Time Tuesdays or even my Monday events. I was able this week because I planned it. I prepared ahead of time. But anyway, I hope that wherever you are, whatever you are going through, that um, that you are experiencing the peace of God. I sent a text to one of my kids today who's a little bit fraught about some areas of life. And I said, the peace of God be with you today. You are not alone. You are supported. You are cared for. And in his time, you will see God work. And as you look back, you will see that he was working all along. Some things take longer than others. Peace be with you. The Lord is near, and your mama is praying for you. And so I want you to know, friends, that you are also my friend, and I pray for you that you'll be encouraged and that I will have given at least one little thought that might keep you going this week. Let me pray for us now. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that somehow, some way in your providence, I got to know you and I got to learn and grow in the knowledge of the wisdom of your word, that your word guides me, that um, the spirit reminds me of truth and that you are teaching me all the years of my life. Thank you that you have prepared this world for me. You have prepared prayer answers for me. You have prepared Um, a kingdom that cannot be shaken. I pray that as my friends listen to this today, that they will be encouraged in their own lives to know that in every circumstance, 
you are present, that they will be able to find a way to move toward your peace, that they will be able to choose to wait upon you, that they will be able to deal with the interruptions, and that you will give them wisdom to plan these important areas of their lives little by little to put into place rhythms and activities and relationship encouragements that will really build a flourishing life. Bless them, bless them, Lord, and give those precious ones who haven't slept in years, give them rest and peace today. Thank you for being real and with us. Help us to wait upon you and to wait until we see you and feel you and sense you, even in those dark times, Lord. We love you so much and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends, I hope you have a wonderful week. Pray for Sally. (laughs) I'll be back soon. Bye-bye. And P.S. I am praying for you. I hope you've enjoyed our time together today and that you'll join me next week. Be sure to look for more inspiration on my blog at sallyclarkson.com. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.